All right, y'all, back out in the garage. And uh, tonight my project was gonna be to try to make the intake manifold fit. So I got my lower intake on there now. And what you'll see when I go to add the plenum to it is it's a little too close to the booster. So this blue line that I marked on it, I'm going to cut away in hopes that that will give me the relief we need to work around the booster. And uh, this is really important because once this plenum is bolted onto the runners, I don't ever want to take it off again. Like I'm gonna be servicing the entire intake manifold as an assembly whenever I remove it. I don't wanna, I, it's not feasible for me to stick my arm down the hole and undo the bolts from the inside. So I'm gonna be red lock tighting, like permanent mounting onto the runners. So I gotta be able to get this manifold off without the booster being a problem. So I got about three quarters of an inch, I'm chopping off the end of the plenum to achieve that. Uh, so tomorrow I work, I'm gonna use the bandsaw to try to get a good cut, and I got a piece of aluminum coming to cap it off, and that should have us good to go for that. All right, so this is my current situation with my intake plenum. The problem was back here where the booster is, and you can see I have adequate clearance now. Well, let me show you what I had to do to get that clearance. So. I was touching the booster and you can see I cut the end open right here. And uh, that was about three quarters of an inch. So I chopped that off at work on the bandsaw on the bench. Um, but just now I, I got home and I test fitted it and it was still, it was much better. Like it would, it would fit on the engine, but there's no way you'd be able to like wiggle it out and put it back in. With it already being tight without gaskets, I'm like, all right, well, I need to do more. So what I did was, now look, this is how easy it is to get this thing off. I'll do it one-handed. So pull off the studs, and it lifts right out of there like that. So in addition to cutting the end, I also cut this opening right here. So it was just straight across the top, but then I'm like, all right, well, this corner's in the way too. So I used my handheld bandsaw, which that thing is becoming a real serious player around here. I've been using it a lot, and it works really good. So I made a cut here, and it actually is a relatively straight cut for freehanding a bandsaw. So now I just need to get my aluminum and box this in and weld it up. And then uh, that will be all for making it fit against the booster. Now there's still much more modification that's going to happen to this guy. And uh, basically the conclusion I can draw now and probably could have drawn this conclusion several weeks ago is that the $50 eBay tube manifold for front, uh, converting to a front-facing uh, throttle body is not a feasible option. Take it off the table. If you were considering this, forget it. I've been exhausting all my resources to make this thing work. It just isn't right. You're, it's not going to fit what you're doing. When you get rid of the stock upper manifold and you go to this, you have no ports for vacuum, so I'm going to have to weld in bungs to get vacuum reference for my... Um, uh, fuel management and also for you know things like the blow off valve and the fuel pressure regulator so i have to weld i'm gonna have to weld some bungs in the bottom to get vacuum source for it um, in my case i'm gonna have to also weld a flange here for my throttle body and i'm gonna have to find some way to weld a retainer for my throttle cable so still so much work to do i've already modified this thing so much i had to modify the lower intake to run the stock rail and drill out the stock rail and weld on a bung and it's just not worth it. For 500 something bucks, I could have gotten an intake that would have already had the fuel rail on it. That would have been much easier than everything I got going on here. What we need to happen next is we got to figure out our throttle cable. So right now the car uses like a linkage, this little plunging rod. And luckily you can get right to the gas pedal, right inside the car now that the dash is out. So that's actually gonna be pretty easy to remove. But then I gotta figure out how to get the universal pedal installed with the cable and then uh, test fit it to run under the intake to where the throttle body will be and figure out where I need to put brackets. I'm gonna need a little bracket on the bottom of the intake for that cable to fasten to. Um, it's gonna be really a short distance and the cable is much longer than that. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna go yet. I've never done a universal throttle setup before. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, once that's figured, I got to figure out how to get the dipstick to fit or mount to the intake. I have some 
um, ports that I'm, or some bungs that I'm welding to the bottom of it. And then after pretty much all of that is finished and everything fits like it should, then we have to do, we have to weld our throttle body flange onto the manifold. And then once all of that's done, we can put the starter on, which is really easy right now. Um, and then permanently install the intake and wiring harness completely installed and then uh, start running the harness from the engine into the car. All right, so we just tacked her up. It's pretty as it needs to be. So we gotta dip this side first and then bring the front down. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's close, but there's for sure uh, an eighth of an inch or so in the closest part. And you know, we're solid mounted too, so the engine shouldn't be moving much. I think that'll be okay. I don't really see any reason to do much more than that, so we'll go ahead and cut, or go ahead and fully weld it, and uh, move on to the next thing. Well, hopefully I won't have to pull the engine apart all that often, but in the event that I do need to, it's not that hard to do. Alright, just got done welding it all up. It looks like my typical stuff. Uh, yeah, this one's not mine. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that one's not mine. So that's all closed off, test fitted, everything was fine. Um, what remains is welding on the throttle body flange, which I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to orient the throttle body. But before I decide that, I have to make sure I can get the accelerator pedal figured out. So I gotta get, I got an universal cable and pedal. I don't know if I covered all that yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the pedal. The universal pedal doesn't really fit anywhere all that nice, but um, the cable looks like it's gonna be pretty easy to use. So really what I'm hoping to do is reuse the stock pedal. Of course, it was a little bit different uh, setup on the original setup, but it also has like an adjustment screw that will dictate how far it returns, like where the stop is for when you let go of the pedal. And it had a switch right here that I just removed completely that was kind of acted as like a stop when you're pushing down. Um, although it also has a stop here that goes up against part of the body. So I don't really think I'm gonna be overextending it at all, but it had like a little ball and socket. I mean, you can still see it, that little ball, because it was a linkage style throttle, it didn't have a cable. So the universal cable just has like a peg that goes through a hole. I really like the idea of making this one work. All I gotta do is, I already kind of drilled this rivet out. I'm gonna pop that little ball off so I can connect the cable up to it and bolt it in the car and just see if it's enough pull to fully open up the throttle. All right, so before I spend a whole bunch of time trying to make this pedal work, I wanted to just see if we were gonna be in the realm of okay with it. So I took a measurement of the circumference of the throttle, the actual throttle, uh, I don't know what you call it, the round guy on the throttle that turns and opens the blade. And um, I figured out the circumference of it and figured out that I'm gonna need about two inches of total throw to turn the throttle blade 90 degrees. And so um, I just measured the throw on my pedal from like the hole where the cable's gonna hook up and I only got about 1.3 inches. So I need to figure out if I can find another seven tenths of travel at the top of this thing. So one way I could achieve more travel out of this is to lengthen the top rod there. I can use the shadow here. <laughs> so if I lengthen the top here, then we'll be able to get more throw. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get seven tenths of an inch. I mean, that's that's kind of a lot for something that's only throwing 1.3 inches. Uh, another alternative would be to change the throttle stop setting. So this will go down more, closer to the floor. But again, man, I don't, I just don't know if I'm gonna get the change I need from that. So I might actually have to use the universal pedal. So let me think about that for a minute, see if I can find a good way to mount up this pedal. Cause this pedal has, it's longer from the fulcrum. So like just glancing at it, I can tell this is much longer than, uh, than the other one. And you can kind of see if I just rest it here flat, I'm like that's probably, my two inches right there. So maybe I will just have to stick with this pedal. The thing I like the least about it is how tiny the little pad is. All right, so I did chop the little bump stop bracket off the back. 
of the pedal and added a small washer behind the bracket right there. And after doing those two things, we get right at 1.96 inches of travel, which is pretty much what my calculation for one fourth the circumference of the throttle body uh, chingadera is. I think that's gonna make the rest of this a much simpler task. So now that I have the pedal well, how I need it, I need a bracket for this to clamp onto. And that's gonna hold the uh, cable and sheathing in place while the uh, pedal does its thing. You know, it moves around, but this thing needs to be solid. The hole that was here previously was much larger. I had to, uh, whoa. I had to uh, kind of add a little wedge there just because the geometry of that lever's slightly different for the cable than it was for the linkage, but that affords me plenty of space. So I'm gonna use this plate of aluminum to bolt into some existing threaded holes here, like so. And a uh, little bolt on there, and I'm gonna make a hole for the cable to clamp onto nicely. And then if the cable ever has to be removed in the future, you'll of course unpin it from the pedal and then just take out these two 10 millimeter screws and this play will be attached to the cable. So it'll come out with it. Not that I'll ever really need to remove the cable, but it'll also kind of plug that hole, which is nice. All right, so that goes on like that. This little nut right here spins onto there. Real easy like, and uh, that's gonna be what holds all this stuff in place. Got that sorted, baby. I like that. Feels great. Feels great. Pedals right where it belongs. Love it. Cool, now let's do the other side. So with the cable in place, I got the intake just loosely bolted up right there. And you can see how the cable will come out of the firewall there from my little bracket and just nicely come underneath to here. And so what I've planned here is to run the cable under the intake and have my throttle body of course, there's going to be a plate between these, but the throttle body will be mounted about right here. Cable will come in on the bottom of it and pull from the bottom because this rotates this direction. So you won't even see the cable at all. It'll work seamlessly. And uh, don't forget my fancy little custom LS1 adapted uh, TPS sensor there, which the wiring connects to the engine harness already. So that'll be what she'll look like. You won't even see the cable at all. All I have to do is weld my flange onto here, making sure the junk on the inside is not going to interfere with the way my throttle blade moves. And then uh, for the this end of the cable, it's actually adjustable. It's got this guy. So the two nuts here will clamp down on my bracket. The sheathing will be like over here on this side. And then we can move these nuts. I got them kind of centered right now where where I'd like to target the bracket, but that gives me about, you know, three eighths of an inch or a half inch or so to move it this way or this way to fine tune it once it's installed. But all I need to do is make a little bracket for this that I can either weld onto the intake somewhere or the intake has like lots of these little threaded bosses everywhere. And there's a bunch down here on the bottom too. So maybe I could just use one of those to just make a little bracket that bolts onto it and not have to do a whole lot of fabricating. All right, so this should be the last time having the plenum off of the uh, lower intake before we permanently install it. I'm adding these bungs. I am gonna go ahead and just add one more bung here just so I can have one that's designated for the map sensor. This one will be for blow off valve, fuel pressure, and this one will be for brake booster. All right, so I got the intake manifold finalized, welded on the flange for the throttle body, welded on our bungs for our uh, vacuum ports, and torqued down the um, fasteners that connect the plenum to the runners with uh, some red Loctite, because if those puppies come loose, they, uh, they're going into the engine. And so I've already started kind of putting the harness in place because once the intake's on, 
that's really the last thing to do up here. Um, I got the starter bolted up. Now I'm gonna get the intake on, pull all our connectors up through the runners and plug in the injectors and stuff. And I'll have the throttle body on there. We'll get it all working and like final installation on that. And uh, let's see how it looks with that intake permanently mounted. All right, so a quick update for you guys. I'm working on running all our wires. I've ran some powers from our fuse boxes and relay boxes over here to miscellaneous places, relocated the knock module to the firewall. Mega score is right here on top of the transmission tunnel. This will all be pretty well concealed or semi-concealed by the dashboard. The, the two big harnesses are plugged into the mega score and I've just been pinning out wire by wire. A lot of stuff is running up above the column and back through the hole in the firewall back there to go to the engine. Our ignition harness off the engine is running through that hole there. Uh, we got some things running to our relay and fuse box and some stuff, and then some grounds go through the body up in the engine bay and ground to the uh, battery cable. So basically where we're at now is I'm gonna see if I can communicate with the Mega Squirt, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing will power up and communicate. All right, so I got it pulled up, set to the Turbo Z tune. Now this is gonna be all L28 settings. I haven't changed anything in the tune yet, but that shouldn't really affect anything at all. So here's my ignition switch. Let's go ahead and power it on. And we are not connected. Let me look into some things. Well, I did nothing. I, well, I unplugged the USB and plugged it back in and then it started communicating. So we're communicating with the Meg Squirt. That's exciting news. So I'm back out in the garage once again. I've been kind of chipping away at this wiring just a little bit every day and starting to finally feel like I'm getting somewhere. I got my spark tester uh, right here and ready to uh, show me a spark. And uh, then I'm going to confirm that the fuel injectors are opening and closing also. So now I'm going to command on the number one coil. And it just, should just pull, should just sit here and spark. Da, 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 da. And uh, we'll see if it works. Coil testing. Coil A, so coil A will be Cylinder one. All right, let's drop that down to two. Oh, oh! I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but we're gonna get a nice bright blue spark right there, baby. Yes! All right, so I'm gonna do that for every cylinder. And just make sure that they're all working because we do have three different transistors that I soldered and wired in. I was able to confirm that all of the coils are sparking. So I got the injector set to uh, just run a sequence. And you can hear them just clicking away. And you can like feel it. It's just doo -doo 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 -doo. So um, all of those are working. So that is very good. What this means is once we have uh, fuel to this thing and, loop and fluids in it, we're gonna have the ability to start it for sure. So we still have to make sure we're gonna have good sync in the crank and, uh, and the cam signal, we'll get a timing light on the balancer and just confirm the actual timing matches what the computer thinks the timing is. And uh, it's actually gonna be pretty easy to start from there. So we're getting very close. This is a big step. The, to have my little homemade ignition control module sparking all the coils is super exciting. And that's a, that's a big step in the right direction. Oh, wait, 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 wait.